Hey everyone, Stephanie here. I haven't made a Mythgard video in like two months, so I figured I would do an update to show you guys the deck that I played to champion this season. Uh, so this season is ending on January 25th, and the devs are currently gearing up for the second big expansion, which is going to be called the Winter Wars. So I'll link to some resources below. There was also recently a pretty big mid-season patch that saw a lot of cards changed. You guys saw at the end of my previous video that I played quite a bit of red-purple aggro, and I actually got to champion using that deck in that season. This season, I've been playing something quite different, uh, which is orange-yellow control. Cool Cat has made a video on that. So I'll link to it. It's a little bit dated, um, but the basic archetype is still there. Archetypes in general don't change that much, even though individual cards might get adjusted uh, in the balance patches. But yeah, so check out Cool Cat's video if you're interested in a previous version of the deck that I'm about to show you. Basic idea of this is that yellow has a lot of draw, of healing and recovery options, misanthropia, these are like the core cards for yellow, um, and then yellow also has Olama Ring, which buffs all minions, and orange is like the swarmy faction, it has a lot of small, cheap ways to generate tokens, so like, Eager Recruit is one of the best 1-drops in the game, it's a 2-1 that also adds a 1-1 one -one to your hand, um, Entrance Broker is a, another good draw option from orange. When you trade in your tokens, uh, this card gains energy and enables you to draw cards. Now in terms of the cards that were released with the Rings of Immortality expansion that are really good for orange, uh, this Archibus, which is a 4-2 and when it dies, it gets replaced by a 2-6 that also has the ability to deal 2 non-combat damage to minions threatening the opposing 3 lanes. Uh, so there's a lot of value for 4 mana. And then there's Triennial Patrol, which is, you know, you get to summon a 3-2 and create two twos in adjacent lanes for 5 mana. Um, so really good control options. This destroys all minions. Oh, Angel got a slight nerf recently. You can, if you notice, the stats have gone down, but it's still one of the most effective board clears from the core set. So between Angel and Misanthropia, and Sapo the Devourer. Basic idea of the yellow orange archetype is to control the board early, wipe the board, then set up your game stuff. Our late game stuff includes the twins, which also received a slight nerf lately. The token used to cost zero mana, now it costs one mana and one gem. I guess this card you can consider it slightly buffed. Previously, the Magpire Commandos did not have focused, but now they have focus, so they can deal an additional 1 damage. Uh, so this is another late game card. Miasma Catalyst is from the Rings of Immortality expansion. Sometimes yellow struggles between, okay, do I wipe the board or do I build a board of my own? And this card kind of does both. An especially good answer to this card. So it gives the opposing minions Blight 1, their stats decay by 1-1 one, one each turn. Um, and it also allows you to put down something. So tons of control options. Um, and we're going with Turn of Seasons, which might no longer be the best path for this deck once the next expansion hits, but for now this path makes the most sense. If you notice, also all of the paths have received a slight adjustment from my previous video. Uh, if you go second using Seasons, you now get a 0-3 Tree of Life that heals for one every turn. Uh, and we're using Mend in order to restore health to our big creatures like our God's Bane and, you know, our Sapo and whatnot. Um, and it also helps us to stabilize against really fast aggro decks. Alright, so this game was against Red Orange, probably the most popular mid range archetype so far in this game. Uh, and you can see that my opponent did actually end up reaching champion, although they were still mithril at the time that I played this game. I was also mithril at the time that I played this game. So I opened with my eager recruit, the same as them. I played my tree of life, 
And they burned their hand of sod, which is one of the new uh, cards it, from the in Immortality expansion. It allows you to draw another Forged Minion when it dies. So I played my Vibrant Quetzal here. The reason I added Vibrant Quetzal is to tag against um, specific aggro decks in this meta. It just has a little bit of extra healing to help stabilize. So there's the Hand of Sod. I'm gonna stun it. So they're ready for anything. It buffs cards in your hand um, and also cycles your deck, helps you to draw, and gives your minions warded the turn that it's played. It's a slight buff to red-orange because traditionally red-orange struggles against like um, you know, Magnus, Thunderclap, those kinds of cards that can just destroy their tokens upon summoning. Uh, so, <laughs> that's one of the new emotes that was added. I was basically a little bit intimidated by all the buffed warded minions. Um, So I decided it wasn't quite time to Misanthropia yet, so I just chose to draw cards um, and block the 3 damage from hitting face. Okay, so my opponent uh, chooses to draw as well with a Panic Raider and buffs their uh, small minions and goes face. Now here I think I'm forced to Misanthropia, yeah, and then I played my Eager Recruit. This also denies my opponent the second draw from the Panic Raider. Okay, so my opponent plays the Muse to try to refill their hand. So I played Entrance Broker and traded immediately to get the draw off it, and then I... Oh, I see, I, I chose the Halcyon Decree. Uh, so the Halcyon Decree, I mostly included that to tech against like canines and other aggro decks that clunk their minions together. But in this case, because it suppresses uh, minions in three adjacent lanes, the suppress is a permanent effect, so it means the 0-1 cannot be buffed to a 1-1. Uh, and it also means that if they trade the 2-1 into my 1-1, then the demise effect doesn't go off. They don't get to draw off of the Muse. So my opponent chose to set up the enchantment. Even though they don't get the draw off the first Muse, they get the frenzied version of the Muse back. Oh, I chose to ignore the 8 damage. That's actually a little bit risky, because in case if my opponent was running the version with uh, Hysterical Strength, which is plus 3 plus 3, that would be a ton of phase damage I would be taking, but I think um, I went for the late game play because I figured my health is pretty high. Like, I don't think they can burst me down from 21, so I am taking a lot of damage on the left here, but I also have my gigantic things set up. <laughs> okay, so there's the buff to Wings of Abaddon. I'm taking 10 on the left, but I also get to start setting up stuff on my way. Um, and I chose Seal of Exile to get rid of the... And my opponent said well played, because Wings of Abaddon is a really important combo piece for Red-Orange. It not only goes face with the rush, can also sacrifice minions to proc the uh, the enchantment and get minions back with frenzy. So I blocked with my archivist here because even if they have ignition or something to remove the 4-2, it still leaves behind a 2-6 body. So I basically am defending the left lane here. I also have wonder drug in hand just in case my health drops too low. <laughs> Alright, so my opponent traded in the news, got a draw, uh, trying to draw off of the hand of Sa'ad as well, and decided to defend a little bit against 
the onslaught on the right. Um, and so I'm continuing to spam out tokens and I basically have a pretty big board lead right now. Uh, Red Orange has um, Gigantomachia and Angel to White Orange, but Because the parry has agile. But yeah, if I were them, I probably would have tried to clear out the left lane to sneak in a lethal somehow. But at this point, it's just I have such a massive board lead and they don't have angel in hand. So. So my opponent is still trying to stall out a little bit, uh, but yeah, I was able to clear the blocker with my seal of exile. <laughs> so that's a game against red orange, uh, I'll pull up a game against aggro next. Alright, this game was against the uh, aggro red purple, uh, which is the deck that I played last season. Um, and I should say here, let me just pause, Rune usually plays control, uh, so he probably was trying out a different archetype since he already hit champion. Um, the main things to know about the changes to red purple is that Shinobi of Fire got nerfed slightly. The flame scroll now costs 3 mana, I believe. So it's interesting to see how people are adjusting that deck in response. Anyway, I opened with my eager recruit. Oh, I guess the version he plays either doesn't have that many one drops or he was just really unlucky. Okay, so he was just really unlucky. He drew the one drop. The Simuzan, but it was too late. So he set up the 3 2 Agile. But fortunately, I have my stun, so then the 3 2 doesn't get to just swing around whatever blocker I put, and I get to trade. Now he sets up the Shinomi of Fire. Then I get to stun it again. Or, oh, I chose Seal, I see. <laughs> Just so I don't have to repeatedly deal with it. Okay, so now he set some the Oak of Dodona. I get to stun it, and I get to stun it, and then. and set up a bit of a board of my own. All right. Okay, so he's cycling through the deck a little bit, discards the potion. Doesn't have enough gems to play the hotel bar key. Hey, yeah. Alright, so I get to draw off my entrance broker. Uh, and I, I chose to heal instead of setting up the right trickster. I guess maybe to avoid being blown up by Vulcan Brand or something. Okay, so there's the Panic Raider, clears out the token. Because the Panic Raider, not Panic Raider, Ruby Raider, does one damage upon breaching. That's one of the upgrades to Red Orange with Rings of Immortality. Okay, so I get to draw, and I chose. Okay, so I chose to. Yeah. I chose not to miss Indoor here because I figured my opponent might want to set up more stuff, and I was right. 
So now I have an answer to the pentacle. Uh, yeah, I guess I was still holding on to the misanthropia in case of like more threatening stuff. Okay, so my opponent sets up the iron belly and the sniffer. I get to kill the the lion for free. Thankfully my opponent is basically out of cards now. Has two ignitions, but now I can set up like an overwhelming board advantage. And the aggro deck doesn't really have like Gigantomachia and stuff. So we're on turn 10. Basically, if aggro hasn't killed by this point, it's hard for them to come back. Yeah, I'm just clogging up the board at this point. I think it's just because he got a really slow start without no one drop. Uh, that's that's a real bummer for an aggro deck to start slow. Okay, this game was against YG Control, which is you know another one of the traditional archetypes, the slowest control archetype. Although with the Rings of Immortality expansion. Um, yeah, my opponent was high mithril at the time of this game. At, with the Rings of Immortality expansion, YG Control got some interesting new win cons. One of them is Auto Magic Artillery, which is um, it puts down a minion that cannot be bounced, uh, and for as long as that minion sticks on the board, it can activate the ability to deal damage to the opponent based on how many spells are in the boneyard. So that's become an interesting new win con for YG control. And it's caused some people to build some slightly faster versions of YG control where they have a lot of uh, cheap spells that cycle really quickly, like overkill, give a minion, overrun, and draw a card. Uh, so they go through their deck a lot more quickly. So I set up my broker here, uh, trading. Oh, but my my two two was stunned, so I couldn't trade that in. Actually, I probably. But yeah, they, my opponent didn't really have a way to kill my broker. I guess unless they have led astray. Okay, so my opponent uh, does the new combo with protect, and um, that's one of the new cards. The new power is protect, and the new card corrode equipment. It's a one mana spell. Give a minion blight to one or blight three if it has armor. So you can use that both to protect your own minions with protect, or you can give an enemy minion protect and then slam the corrode. Uh, that's one of the new combos to watch out for. But I still get a draw off my insurance broker. So that card um, that my opponent is holding in the hand next between the Zolea and the Sapo, that's the new automatic artillery. Okay, so I get to draw cards here. And I forge my patrol and play the recruit. We have a mission. 
I'm positioning aggressively here because I know that my opponent's deck is pretty slow, possibly even slower than mine. Okay, so my opponent plays Zolea. I believe I just wiped the board here. Oh, I don't. I'm trying to bait out more stuff. So just equalizing the board at this point. Um, yeah, I'm baiting out more removal. <laughs> it's not worth it to use the removal on my 3-3. But <laughs> okay, so my opponent is holding on to mission field. Yeah. And yeah, they are doing the same thing, trying to bait out removal. Uh, not using the misanthropia yet because they know I have more stuff in hand. So I play out one. Do I play the second twin? I don't remember. Okay, I don't play the second twin. That's a good choice. Okay, so at this point, my opponent plays Media Autocam. Uh, the new card from Rings of Immortality. That allows them to. Uh, it's a new artifact that generates energy whenever you play spells, and then every four energy, I believe, you get to draw cards. You get to draw a card. Uh, so my opponent made a pretty big brain play there, bounced the Zolea back to their hand instead of using the bounce as removal, and then used Misanthropia to clear my board so they get to replay the Zolea again later. But thankfully I didn't overcommit. I saved the other twin and also like this Anthropia like answers twins really well, but the gigantic Godsbane transport starts with 10 health and like gets to stick for longer and pump out more T2 tokens. Okay, so my opponent stuns the Godsbane transport with Bella. Tries to control the board. Uh, and I have Dark Passenger to kill the Zolea. <laughs> and I still have a board lead at this point. I also got rid of their uh, card drawing artifact. Okay, so they use the Corrode Equipment on my on my twin, stun the Tutu, and then play Contagionoma, which is one of the new cards. It's another one of those uh, cards that that's like generates damage whenever it sticks on the board, so it just has to be removed. Okay, so there's the auto magic, but thankfully I have my seal of exile that I've been holding on to. Uh, so you can see, uh, let me just go back a little bit. So you can see the auto magic artillery. Deal damage to your opponent equal to the number of spells in your boneyard, which is 11 spells at this point, with the overkill, detained, um, all of that. Corrode equipment. So if this sticks, then it gets to hit me for 11, and then 11 again the turn after. Uh, and it has quite a lot of health, also armor too, and it cannot be returned from play, so it cannot be bounced. So one of the only ways to deal with this is Seal of Exile, or if you have a minion um, that in front of it and your opponent is forced to play the auto magic as a blocker, then you can try to buff your minion to uh, to take it out through combat. But yeah, this is one of the more powerful win cons for YG currently. So I've been holding on to my Seal of Exile, which means all copies of that get removed. It cannot be. <laughs> Uh, like, YG can keep returning it with like, um, Wake the Bones and whatnot, Iku uh, not Ikuto, so Chord Stag. But yeah, now that I've played Seal on it, I don't have to keep removing it. Alright, so I played my Miasma to help 
slowly wear down the Iku. And I don't know why my opponent chose to murmur that instead of like my 4-6. Who knows? <laughs> I guess maybe to protect their face from more damage because they've already used um, the Wonder Drug. So the Iku just kind of dies. Uh, Alright. That's a more threatening board. But now I have my misanthropia that I've been holding on to. And I have I have just card advantage at this point. I also have Olama Ring. So my opponent has misanthropia but nothing else. Basically a free turn for me. And I get to set up my God's Beam. Yeah, my opponent is forced to misanthropia here. But again, I just get to pump out more tutus from the God's Beam. And I get to play the patrol as well. And it's like a really deadly board with Olama Ring next turn. So my opponent blocks on the right with the Troid Stag and then stuns my God's Beam to prevent it from uh, pumping out more tutus. But now I get to buff everything. Oh, and you might you might have noticed that Troid's Dan got nerfed slightly as well. It used to be it cannot take more than 3 damage in combat, and now it cannot take more than 4 damage in combat. So the two tokens were able to trade into it there. And yeah, I think my opponent just has no more cards to deal with my stuff at this point. And they only have 5 cards left in deck, so I think really the defining move in this game was using the seal on the auto magic because that really was their win con that they were going for. Alright, now I should show you a loss. Uh, this was against orange-purple mid-range, uh, piloted by Wholesome. And I will place a link to Holson's channel in the description below. <laughs> He's using one of the new emotes. <laughs> and he's using Coliseum of Strife, uh, which is the new path. Basically, the at, for every three minions you kill, you get to draw a card. So I stun the right trickster to prevent it from activating the debuff. And then my opponent plays Hotel Barky. Still the best purple 3 drop. 3 4 that also gives a free uh, power activation. Oh, I should mention, uh, Impel the power to move has been nerfed. It now costs 3 mana, but then. My opponent is using hotel bar keeps to generate powerful ramen in order to continue using impel for a reasonable amount of mana. Okay, so my opponent plays mutton morphosis to deny me the ability to trade and also to, to deny the 2 6 that comes out of it. <laughs> so I, yo I used my annoyed oh my oh my Um. And also, like, doing the sheep allows my opponent to get the the Coliseum trigger. And because my minions are in winter, they all have fragile 1, they get an additional 1 damage. X-Man was changed recently, it now does 1 damage to the opposing enemy minion upon entering play. So that's a really nice tempo play by my opponent there. Okay, so I gave my opponent the trade, and then I drew 
but I'm starting to fall behind a little bit. I get to block, but then also like the 2-1 gives him <laughs> the Colosseum trigger. Alright, we are now on turn 7. Starting to head into Lakey. Yeah, and unfortunately, I'm getting my opponent a lot of Coliseum fuel <laughs> with my tokens. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe I should have played more aggressively, not bothered to block, and just tried to out value. Oh, there is the Olama Ring, a little bit late, but... Alright, now I get to play the God's Beam and block both of those. But my opponent gets the buff his hand with the ready for anything. Okay, use the impel offensively to move the 4 to over. So I buff my tokens and also play offensively. But here my opponent has the perfect grade uh, to end Saren. Maybe I should have just played Sam now that I think about it. Yeah, I'm just way too behind at this point. So I have several to clear that, but then it just goes back because of the uh, God of Gamer buff. Goes back into his deck. So he gets to redraw it. Oh. Yeah, I used the X-Man to clear out the 2-1 and the Impel to move the 4-2 to continue hitting. Basically got too much value out of the 4-2. And I drew my board clear but too late. I really needed to answer the board a lot earlier. And also my sapo just dies for free because I don't have a way to move it out of range. It's actually not over yet though at this point because I have my wonder drug. <laughs> This game dragged on for longer than I remember. Alright, so... This is my weapon. So I block with the 4-2. Then my opponent gets to impel over and kill it. And play the Risen from the deep. Alright, so I play my Yasma to clear out the... Master of Shadows. But yeah, my opponent has the perfect grade. <laughs> and just has more cards than me at this point. I basically have. But like, even if I have Misanthropia, I'm still dead. <laughs> so. Yeah, that was very well played by Wilson. Alright, one last one. This one was against Peter Max, who came over to this game from Tessel. He's one of the more adventurers deck builders in this game. He always plays some really weird off-meta stuff. Uh, yeah, Midgard is very, very fortunate to have him. 
So here he seems to be playing Blue Orange with Journey of Souls, which is kind of an unusual path for Blue Orange. Usually I see Blue Orange played more with like um, the enchantment path. Also, I'm not sure why he didn't play a 1-drop even though he had 1-drops in hand. Um, I don't know. Anyway, so here, right, I thought that he used his right trickster's ability on my right trickster to deny the trade, but then he actually used it on my eager recruit, so then my recruit just dies for free, as you will see. <laughs> I was like, oops, okay, so. I activated my right trickster on his uh, recruit and then I got the trade, drew off of my broker. So he burns uh, his one drop, plays the Scion. And I have to protect my broker, so I stun the, the Scion and then I block the 2 1 with my token so that I can get the trade after. Then my opponent, of course, has a really big tempo play, the Magnus. Magnus got a stat debuff recently. It's no longer um, it's no longer as threatening of a body, but the awakened effect is still really strong. So I'm still just trying to continue to protect my broker. It has lurker and. Um, cannot be killed while um, it has minions adjacent to it. Unless my opponent has an agile minion. Okay. So here I get the trade and play my other broker to keep drawing. Um, then I continue to protect my broker. With the token. So my opponent uh, has to play the Magnus that's in his hand to answer this board. And I play my twins to contest his board. He gets cards back from the Journey of Souls. Gives himself a discounted Freddy side card, probably for some wacky combo later. So I continue to draw and I play my right trickster. He plays Lavish Proxy, which means um, he cannot die while the Lavish Proxy is on board. So I just kind of slowly build up my board here. Uh, use the Blights to clear out the token. And he plays his right trickster. I forge my patrol um, and decide to just deal with the right trickster. I don't know which minion he targeted, so I took a risk. Turned out to be my right trickster, but then I decided to just uh, hit anyways. And the reason why I'm playing aggressively here is because I know he's setting up for some kind of combo, possibly with All Father's Horn. So I'm trying to win before he assembles his combo pieces together. Uh, thankfully, he doesn't have the passenger to answer my sapo, so he. He clears my other stuff with the angel and then blocks my sapo. My sapo is awarded, cannot be killed by angel. And here, uh, you have to s you see I have lethal on board, but it has to be very carefully sequenced. So I burn an orange card that I don't need. Uh, and then mandatory vigor gives my minion an additional action, but minus two strength. Seal of Exile clears the blocker, but also takes away an orange gem permanently. Vengeful Heirloom gives plus two attack, but also costs an orange gem. 
、uh, if I were to play seal first, then I wouldn't have enough orange gems to do everything.、Uh, so I basically have to sequence very carefully here, as you see. So I buff first,、uh, give the action first, and then seal, and the eight attack gets to swing twice for exact lethal. And I believe my opponent <laughs> gave me an emote here, but then it wasn't recorded in the in the replay. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This season has been quite interesting. Like after the big mid-season patch, people played a lot of really weird experimental stuff on the ladder, and also like the traditional archetypes have been shaken up quite a bit.、Uh, so if you've taken a break from this game, definitely consider coming back. Since the current season is ending on January twenty fifth, there's quite a bit of like last minute laddering going on. After January twenty fifth, I'm gonna look forward to what the next expansion is gonna give. I definitely look forward to this game having a deeper card pool. There's also gonna be like another advertising push with the second expansion, so hopefully more people are gonna show up. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you sometime in the future, I guess.